morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So if you're wondering about the John Deere 720, we have found parts for it. We've located crankshaft for it. So uh, as soon as we get all that stuff back for it, we will be putting that tractor back together and we will be doing videos on that. So anyways, what we're going to be doing today is we have our power unit from the sawmill that we brought home a few weeks ago. A few viewers said, hey, I want to hear that power unit run. We like the way them Continental engines sound. So uh, I figured, well, we'll bring it in the shop. We'll get it running. Uh, regardless what I do with the sawmill, as far as powering it, I'm going to keep this for it. So uh, this will be an engine that I run it for, with. Um, I would like to set up a few different engines to run it with, just for fun. But uh, definitely going to keep this one with it, because this is the one that originally ran it. So this is a Continental engine, also built under the Rio name. When they're built under the Rio name, they're called the Gold Comet. Uh, it's a 331 cubic inch engine. Uh, it was designed in 1949. They were found in the Rio M35 trucks at about 146 horse at 3,400 RPM. Uh, the trucks weighed about 12,500 pounds. They had a max speed of 58 miles an hour. Uh, they carried 50 gallons of fuel on them and they had a range of 300 miles. Uh, the bore and stroke on this engine is four and an eighth, so it's considered a square motor. It's got a four and eighth bore and a four and eighth stroke. Um, if it is a Rio, the uh, engine number would be uh, OA-331, since so it's a cubic inch. And if it's a Continental, it's COA-331. So a little bit of history on it. It is a multi-fuel engine. Uh, you'll see a lot of things, all these lines are cut, but at one time that was all part of the multi-fuel system on it. Multi-fuel is basically whatever they could find that was flammable, this engine would supposedly run on. Now John Deere, they done this kind of, you know, with their unstyled John Deere A's, like GP sitting back there. The idea was once the engine got hot, you could switch it over to a, a cheap burning fuel like kerosene or maybe a little diesel fuel and they would run on it because they were good and hot and they could vaporize that fuel. And that's what I think they got going on with these lines all around the block is by circulating that fuel around the block, they got it hot before it went in the carburetor and then it would vaporize and it burn. Uh, you'll see that this alternator has this interesting uh, wire fitting on there, I suppose you call it. It's got three terminals in it um, and a wire with thread on there. That's military. Uh, the Delco ignition here is military stuff. So at one time, this engine wasn't a truck, a military truck. So we've got some wiring that we need to fix because as you can see, we've got a lot of just blue automotive wire all over the place and uh, this ground is is bare terrible so that's got to go so uh, let's get started let's start with the obvious first um, we'll get some wiring fixed and we'll get a good battery uh, hot cable to the starter and we'll get a good ground put on it and we'll see if she'll fire up so let's get started So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, get rid of this nasty ground wire. I just have it threaded in the frame here. So what we're going to do is I have a pre-made ground wire that I made for something else. Let's shine this up a good spot. Shine this into this cable up. So this is, the frame is grounded to the engine block because it is bolted to the um, engine mounts there. So what I'm going to do is eventually, I'm going to rewire all this. I'm going to put an actual, probably a ignition key switch. So that way when, when we turn the key on, we have ignition. This is the ignition here. And we also have our fuel pump right away. So 
the way they got it now is you have ignition and then fuel pump and you got to shut them both off where if we have a key switch we'll just hit it all shut it all off at once and what i like about key switches is is you, once you pull the key out there's no chance of a little kid walking up and starting a machine um you know i don't like a lot of push button start on equipment because then there's no way of controlling it you know you know anybody can jump in it hit the starter button and it starts up so it's just safer to have key switches i think i mean yeah it's a pain because you gotta deal with the key but even if you had just a, a standard ignition where you know all the keys are the same at least you can pull that key out or you can do you can do battery disconnects if you want to but a key's a simple deal all right, so we got our ground. Next thing we're going to work on is I want to eliminate all this and I want to make some good wire because this isn't very good wire and these are not uh, heat shrink or heat shrink connections so they could get moisture in them. So let's re redo all that. Well, we'll get us a new positive cable made to run to the starter. So what I'm going to use is some uh, bulk, uh, actually welding cable. Uh, it's welding and battery cable, but I like the fine wire to make my battery cables out of because the fine wire seems to carry the battery voltage a little better than the coarse stuff. So uh, we need to put a 3 8 eye on this end. This will go to the starter. So we'll get this insulation off of here. Now you've watched me make a lot of battery cables. If you've followed the channel for a while now, and you know that I like to solder and crimp all my cables. We're gonna go ahead and get some solder melted in this. Well, there we go. that solder in there take that out of the vise put it in our crimping tool Oops. spit all over the table put that where we want it turn it a little bit and crimp it there we go now Get a little heat shrink out of here. Oops, got my heat shrink. This. I'm gonna put it on this end, slide it all the way down. There we go. There we go, good and sealed up. All right, now we can put our other end on this end of the cable. Well, we'll put our battery terminal end on now. Unfortunately, I don't have any straights. So this 90 you'll have to do, which is fine, I suppose, because the way it comes out from underneath the power unit, it's not really gonna matter. But I was, I was really hoping I had a straight one, but this'll work. So we need to figure out where we're going to be here. Uh, it looks about right there. Go ahead and get that insulation off. Pull that back. Oh yeah, that'll be nice. Need a little zip tie.
put a little zip tie on there to hold them wires so that we can uh, slide that down in our crimp or slide that down in because this is going to be hot I can't touch it once I get solder in it so a zip tie will hold them wires together for the time being you're actually supposed to just crimp these you're not really supposed to solder them but I feel better with them soldered oh almost forgot almost forgot that Ouch. All right. Okay. There we go. I always hate that when I forget my heat shrink. I happen to look over and I'm like, oh, I don't have no heat shrink on that. A lot of us have done that. Go ahead and admit it. We've all done it. Forgot our heat shrink. Or putting a trailer plug together, get it all in the trailer plug and realize you forgot to slide the boot on the uh, trailer cord first. That's always a good one. Alright. I get a pair of side cuts and cut that. Zip tie off. There we go. Let me go get side cuts and cut that zip tie. Well, we got that zip tie off of there. We'll slide our heat shrink up. There we go. We have a nice sealed up weatherproof battery cable. And the nice thing about that welding wire is it's nice and flexible and pliable. You can do whatever you want with it, bend it however you want. All right, let's get it put back on. So here's where our starter's located, right here. Got a very simple uh, starting deal. It's just a starter button and this lever you pull back here. Put this wire back on, like so. Go ahead and tighten that up. Okay. Now we're ready to go put that on the battery with the rest of the wires. Well, getting some of these wires made up here. So I need to make a wire to go from the hot of the battery to the ignition hot. So I'm just taking some of this red wire and putting ends on it, leaving it plenty long so that when I do decide to rewire it, do something different with it, I got plenty of wire to work with. This wire is reasonably priced, so if I use a little extra, oh well. And it always, it never hurts to leave a little extra in case something was to happen, like uh, you might have an accidental wire fire or something like that, you just never know. So I always like to leave extra. Kind of like to do that with just about everything. Hoses, wires. Go ahead and heat shrink these real quick. Looks good. Do this end. You don't want to get them too hot. You don't want to catch them on fire, but... You want to get them hot enough to get the point across. Alright, so that is our 
Let's hook it up here first. Ouch! That's hot. Got it point across to me, that's for sure. did find me another uh, another switch because this switch was bad so I found another one all right okay that can go to our positive there now all I need to do is run a hot from here up to the fuel pump because the original fuel pump must have went bad on this engine it had an engine driven one somewhere on the other side so uh, they replaced it with a just a 12 volt electric one. So I'll get the rest of these wires put together and we'll see if it'll turn over. So I do have one concern here and uh, that is the fact that this engine could be 24 volt. Um, this ignition says 24 volt on it but from what I've learned in the world of 12 and 24 volt, is sometimes that don't mean much. Uh, I don't know if this was possibly converted one time at 12 volt to 12 volt because this alternator generator, whatever you want to call it, is not hooked up. So I don't know the full story. Um, like I said, it could have they could have put 12 volt internals in that. I'm not even sure what this wire does. So I don't know if this was hooked up here as a ground at one time. I don't know yet. So what we're going to have to do is get everything wired up that we know needs wired up. And then uh, we'll just have to experiment with it. Um, there was no evidence that there was two batteries present to make 24 volt. So we'll just have to play with it and see what we got here. If it is 24 volt, that's no big deal. I've got some extra batteries. We can make uh, we can make 24 volt. We can make that happen. I mean, the heavy equipment around here is all 24 volt, so I know how 24 volt works. But I'm kind of hoping it's not 24 because I don't have to deal with a second battery then. So we'll figure that out when we get to it. Well, we've got everything hooked up. I want to check some power real quick, see what we've got, see what we don't have. So let's start with our fuel pump. Ah, we have fuel pump. You can actually hear it run, feel it run. We have that. So, ignition. We have power to our ignition. Okay, that switch might be a little iffy. So we do have power to our ignition. So now we'll have to see if we can turn it over. So what three things does an engine need to run? Have you guessed it yet? Okay, in order to get an engine to run, you need ignition, compression, and fuel, and then it should run. So your fuel is your gas, your air, your ignition is your voltage, your spark, and your compression is the compression in the cylinders. So let's see if it'll turn over. All right, let's see what happens. Ready? Well, it turns over. I don't know if that's quite fast enough, but it does turn over. We'll have to find out. Let's get some fuel to it now. Well, I got the fuel system all hooked up to just a gas can sitting here on the floor and a piece of hose. And uh, the pump pumped up, it primed. Uh, so I decided, well, I'm gonna pull the air intake off and I'm gonna have a look in there. Well, as you can see, we've got some nastiness in here. And this uh, butterfly won't open. So we're going to have to get that cleaned up somehow. So we're going to take the top off of here. Looks like Mr. Kaiser had this apart before. Judging by the way the screw heads look. 
see what we got going on in here. Make sure we don't have any mouse nests or anything like that. Get that butterfly opened up. Maybe get some old rusties on it or something. So take caution when you're messing with gas. Uh, we have an open container of gas now. So uh, at least all the electrical stuff is done with. We're not making any sparks, but you never know. So be, just take caution. Be careful. So we got going on. Oh, got a gasket. Well, we got gas up in there now. Let's see what we got here. Yes, it's not the best of shape. Oh, oh boy. Got a little nastiness in there. We got to do a little cleaning on this and see what we can do. Looks like we got a little silicone in there. Let's see what happens. Well, we have no ignition. We have no spark. I put the spark tester in there, turned it over. We have none whatsoever. We've got fuel dripping down in the intake. I tried starting fluid. There's just nobody home in the spark department. So we'll take the top off of this uh, distributor here and see what we got going on inside. See if we've got points like any other engine or what is going on never been into one of these i would say this is military now these these engines were also available for civilian use trucks they weren't just military but uh let's see what we got in here oh boy okay so we got a, a coil we got points so we got points back here so we'll file those points and see what we got going on that's interesting. That's just a that's just a coil, a Delco coil that sits down in there. So uh, we have a condenser. So yeah, just kind of a standard, basically like a tractor. Oh boy, yeah, those need cleaned up. So it's like a tractor ignition. So we clean them points up and see what we can get. So we're just going to use our standard issue one dollar bill points file here. Just fold you up a one dollar bill. Well, any kind of currency, really. You could use 100, I suppose, if you want. Works pretty good for a point file. Let's clean that stuff off in points and let's see what we got. I'm not sure what this wire is exactly for. You have to figure that out. Maybe that's how he used it as a kill switch at one time. I'm not real sure. So, I'll file these and see what happens. Well, I cleaned everything up, and uh, definitely, uh, if you move the points now, you get you get some spark. And uh, trust me, that's a hot spark because I uh, got nailed by it. So definitely hot spark there. We'll put our uh, rotor back on. I took uh, some emery cloth and I cleaned up all of our contacts here in the cap. So now we should be able to just put this back on like so. We gotta poke this wire back up through. I'm not sure what it does yet. Not exactly sure his idea with that. So now we can put all the screws back in and uh, we'll try again and see if we have any spark yet. Hopefully we got some spark this time because before we had absolutely nothing. So fingers crossed we got something this time. Okay, so I pieced some things together and I realized that it is 24 volt. Uh, so I got some things cleaned up in the ignition and I got some spark, but I'm still not happy with the way the points look and things like that. But I did get some spark, so uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. I got some batteries rigged up here. As you can see, nothing too fancy. Uh, just uh, got some uh, vice grips holding things because one one battery has the threaded post, the other one has the normal post, so you have to get two matching batteries. Um, but this is what I've got on hand today. So let's uh, let's try with a little starting fluid first. Let's see if let's see if it'll hit on some John Deere 80% ether. Got our ignition. Let's just see what happens here.
Good start. We got a fire. So uh, let's try to get some uh, gas to it and see what happens. All right, see if we can get it running with a little gas. On some gas let's put that top back on the carburetor i don't know how well that's going to work with that ceiling uh ring missing or uh gasket or whatever goes on there i'll have to find a carburetor kit for it so let's put that top back on well let's give it another shot definitely going to need a carburetor kit there's uh some gaskets that are in pretty bad shape in there so hey at least it runs though we did figure that out so uh pretty cool that it runs just stuff from sitting so long, you know, it's, it causes issues, you know. Give it a little throttle here. So hey, it runs though. So thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. We'll see you all in the next one. So we'll get some parts ordered and we'll get it running properly.